when we speak of ai uh, usually it comes to language right but what think about it uh, apart from language uh, the biggest amount of uh, data consumption that we do is vision all the information around us that is what images are doing for us um, we are already executing our vision of being a full stack uh, observation company in the next couple of years uh, we'll have our assets up in orbit ai um, we like it, it's not a good to use for us it's a must use for us because the volume of the data that we deal with is tremendous Hello everyone, I'm Ipsita Basu from Your Story and welcome to Up Close, a special series where we bring you candid conversations with some of the most exciting founders and change makers shaping India's future. This is part of our Road to Tech Spark series where we spotlight the stories, ideas and innovations leading up to Your Story's flagship startup tech conference. Now, Satsure is one of the most exciting companies in India today at the intersection of space, AI and decision intelligence. It's using satellite data and deep tech to help industries make smarter, faster decisions, which range from agriculture and banking to infrastructure and sustainability. Today, we are thrilled to have with us Prateep Basu, founder and CEO of Satsure, to take us behind the journey, the technology, and the vision that's driving this transformation. Welcome, Prateep. Thank you for uh, being at your story, and thank you for giving us this interview with Upclose. Thanks for having me here, Ripshita. Prateep, uh, tell us about the journey of Satsure. You know, what inspired you to start a company which is at the intersection of space, uh, AI, and decision intelligence? For uh, me, it was uh, primarily how do we use uh, data from space uh, for solving real-world problems. Uh, if you look at uh, the other kind of space-based services, communication, navigation, already day-to-day uh, -day, uh, life, it impacts us. For example, you go from point A to point B, uh, you put it on a Google Maps, no one thinks about uh, it that there are four satellites, uh, you know, signals that are being triangulated to help you navigate, right? Uh, that same thing hasn't uh, hadn't happened with imagery. And uh, uh, here we are uh, constantly speaking about uh, uh, how do we uh, adapt to climate change? How do we move to more sustainable practices? And for all of uh, uh, such initiatives to succeed, you need data. Uh, and you need uh, data to make decisions, the right decisions, the right kind of po uh, policies. This is where uh, satellite imagery stand out, uh, stands out because uh, it is data collection at planetary scale uh, with the information at the sharpest level of any point on Earth. And uh, yet there were not enough amount of uh, uh, commercial and civilian applications being built out of it. Uh, that's what uh, kind of led us to look at how can we uh, take some of this large uh, you know problems that that affect us as as humanity and uh, uh, build solutions uh, that that tomorrow ten years from now maybe no one will think about it just like in the case of your Google Maps that there is satellite image and AI powering uh, such such uh, decision making. When you look back, what were some of your early challenges uh, while you were building a space tech company, and what were the measures you took to sort of overcome them? So we started our company in 2017, and at uh, that time. Uh, there was not even a uh, space uh, policy or regulation uh, uh, in place uh, and uh, no body to do that. Today there is uh, in space uh, under Department of Space which does it. So uh, the absence of uh, such such uh, regulatory environment uh, was obviously not conducive for uh, fundraising capitalism because venture capitalists want to uh, have that assurance. Right. Uh, second was user awareness. Uh, for the first, I would say three to four years, uh, we we spent our own money in uh, educating uh, different kind of customers as to what can be done and what can't be done. I think more important was what can't be done. Uh, and last but not the least, uh, at that time uh, when we started, which was quite early in from the Indian private ecosyst uh, space ecosystem uh, journey, uh, the the availability of talent to build. Uh, your products uh, to, to build this company was also uh, pretty scarce because uh, everyone uh, 
you know only could relate to isro when you spoke of space commercial space did not exist today we have an ecosystem that, that's built up people are excited by it there is funding coming in so it's a very different world uh, that has changed i would say in a span of less than a decade so yeah we start we are one of the early movers uh, who had to encounter such challenges right now you know satchio combines earth observation data ai and deep tech to sort of create an actionable insights for your customers and uh, for other sectors as well can you simplify this you know uh, how do earth intelligence platforms work <laughs> that's a great question because platform that uh, word can be sometimes uh, confusing so many different uh, companies will use that in very different context uh, in our context uh, a platform is is nothing but the back end engine where different kinds of satellite data uh, which which have their own unique uh, data analysis processes their own set of rules uh, how to interpret the images uh, have they can come together have a good parking base you can uh, have uh, data scientists with no background in this remote sensing and physics uh, to be able to simply uh, run their models in production environment uh, analyze have a feedback loop uh, do the have the observability on it uh, the quality checks at each point so this is what in our context a platform means now uh, since we are analyzing images we are not just analyzing one type of feature a feature could be vegetation it could be all these uh, built up areas right so uh, how do you then translate the the analysis of all of these image uh, features into real insights that's where the orchestration engine comes in that for example uh, i keep giving this uh, uh, case study of how we work with banks where uh, uh, there was a uh, about 30 to 45 days of time period required to do a new loan for a farmer which seemed very ridiculous because we would keep getting uh, uh, you know mobile like whatsapp offers uh, on uh, our uh, uh, loan eligibility so the the prime reason for that was the risk perception and the digital journeys were lacking so simply by using uh, the same engine the platform we were able to combine uh, our analysis of cropping patterns climatic patterns water uh, risk etc into a single scoring mechanism like a sibel or a crif score uh, which then we worked with banks uh, who can now do uh, like condense that process into a 10 to 30 minutes of uh, uh, you know journey which used to be like almost a month now you know satsure is contributing to india's first fully indigenous fully commercial satellite network what does this milestone mean for the company and for the country's private space ecosystem yeah we are uh, uh, quite excited by this opportunity because uh, uh, all the companies uh, who are part of the winning consortium pixel as rova space ps site uh, we were anyway executing our individual company's vision uh, by having this opportunity uh, that in space created through this public private partnership uh, it helps us to come together and build a vision for india in this sense uh, uh, i would say the the sovereignty of data uh, coming from like imagery coming from space is a very important aspect uh, isro has been uh, uh, feeding that for the nation for a while uh, we are only adding more capacity to what isro already do does uh, and uh, uh, making sure that uh, you know if if we are uh, looking at viksit bharat uh, here this becomes a key pillar of viksit bharat of uh, how we do not have to depend on uh, uh, western countries uh, or for for data, our data needs now you know uh, ai is the buzzword in fact uh, even at tech sparks this year uh, we are going to talk about ai india powered by ai in 2030 tell us how does satsure leverage ai to turn uh, raw satellite data into insights for uh, you know the allied industries like agriculture banking aviation and infrastructure and what is the real play of ai uh, has been in the last couple of years and where do you see it in moving in the next couple of years ai um, we like it's it's not a good to use for us it's a must use for us because the volume of the data that we deal with is tremendous which means that it is very difficult for any human analyst to keep identifying patterns and you know relationship uh, between different regions and different features uh, hence for us uh, all the modeling that we do uh, it it is different variants of ai it can be uh, if it's a small data set it can be machine learning if it's slightly larger data set it's deep learning today we are building foundation models for example in, in uh, uh, at satsure so that uh, the the combination of different sensors data which when put into a mixer 
uh, of, of different ensemble of models helps us to uh, arrive at those insights for industries that we serve like uh, agriculture, aviation, uh, uh, utilities, etc. at a much faster time with higher generalization with, uh, uh, you know, with, with higher uh, precision uh, of, the, of the insights. Usually it would other, uh, take otherwise uh, uh, a much longer time to keep doing the retraining uh, here. So we have gone through the different waves of uh, AI. Today, what we are speaking of is AGI, Artificial General Intelligence. From a remote sensing perspective, it's not yet reached, I would say, uh, but uh, it's maybe a matter of a couple of years at uh, max because when we speak of AI, uh, usually it comes to language, right? But what, think about it, uh, apart from language, uh, the biggest amount of uh, data consumption that we do is vision, all the information around us, that is what images are doing. So yes, uh, uh, AI is an integral part of how we make our data interpretation uh, uh, is sim simpler and more reliable. How are you ensuring uh, at Satcher that the whole earth intelligence is not just for large enterprises and you know large businesses, but you're actually able to give outcome to smaller farmers, rural banks, and other emerging sectors? Right, I think that's where the business model part comes in. Uh, for example, doing a direct to farmer, uh, you know, advisory. Uh, was was very difficult for a company that is already having much higher cost on the technology development here and to go and acquire a large set of farmers for example would have been even more uh, expensive. Uh, I would say that uh, the more the use cases develop around uh, the, the earth imaging and AI, uh, the more uh, bolder we can be uh, in terms of a business model to directly uh, reach such customers and maybe someone like us who's uh, getting alerts on our encroachment for example on a phone that if you have a land that we have bought farmland we're going to settle we know that someone is not going and encroaching typical problems in India right so there are many other uh, such uh, consumer centric use cases uh, which are today not served just because the business model is not uh, uh, suitable but it will be reaching uh, that point very soon. You said that how AI for you is a must-have, not a nice-to-have. Now, how do you see AI and satellite technology converging to create solutions that sort of address this whole uh, gamut of problems like climate change, sustainability, and urban planning challenges uh, in India and also globally? So this is already uh, something uh, which has picked up uh, in the recent years uh, because uh, the sheer volume of data that satellites uh, are producing and have produced is tremendous. Uh, and uh, it, it, just a few examples like uh, Google uh, has uh, launched recently something called Alpha Earth Foundations, which are embeddings, uh, uh, embeddings of, of seven years of open source satellite data uh, at a global scale. Uh, now, what it does is uh, for any you know data scientist with no uh, background in remote sensing, they can go and uh, query a certain feature in a certain parcel of land anywhere in the world and know the trends of what has changed in uh, in there, which is very powerful. Uh, I think that's the uh, that's the excitement of the convergence of EU and AI uh, that uh, AI enables you to uh, to mine how your planet is changing uh, and uh, then the wrapper of the context comes in whether you put that context in of urban planning of uh, uh, climate resiliency etc uh, and and it it essentially builds the base infrastructure for a developer ecosystem who build apps that can you know actually address some of the pressing problems that we speak about right Pratik, looking ahead, you know, what's your vision for Satchur uh, in the next five years? When, if we sit to do this interview again in 2030, uh, where will we see Satchur having moved from here? For us, um, we are already executing our vision of being a full stack uh, Earth observation company. A full stack for us means that uh, while we started from the solutions and data platform side, we back we. We initiated a backward integration, which is where the optical multispectral uh, satellites come into play. Uh, in the next couple of years, uh, we'll have our assets up in orbit and we'll be uh, uniquely placed as a company that owns the data, that owns the, uh, the models which are proprietary uh, and it uh, essentially has uh, 
uh, a touch point in different kinds of uh, user industries solving uh, problems that are big enough uh, and impactful enough for, for us to say that we have moved the needle on something, whether it's financial inclusion, the sustainable transition, our building climate resiliency in our infrastructure. So yeah, uh, vision doesn't change. I think the uh, 2030 would be probably, you know, uh, Satsure would be still doing the same thing, uh, will be slightly larger. Uh, we we uh, might have a more, I would say, expanded global footprint than what we have today. So, you know, Pratip, you've built a business in a tough sector. Uh, for young founders and technologists who are aspiring to work at the intersection of AI space and impact, what's your advice to them? Just don't be afraid uh, to dream big. And uh, uh, there is uh, uh, there's going to be a lot of resiliency required to build in tough sectors. Uh, uh, I think uh, when we started, uh, we had embraced that because there was no support ecosystem uh, around us. Today, there is quite a lot of ecosystem, but I, I don't think it's still enough to uh, legitimately say that we can build, uh, you know, 100 great companies uh, out of India. Uh, but that shouldn't stop uh, people to, you know, uh, come and uh, execute their their passion. Uh, and uh, uh, I would I think one, one bit that is easier for uh, anyone starting now is that they'll be leveraging the foundations that some of us who started early uh, have built and we are uh, happy uh, about it. Uh, and we will always be there to, uh, like some of us who started early, like Dhruva Space, Bellatrix, Earth, Pixel, Skyroot, we, we folks will always be there to uh, support if if there are people looking to start up in the space sector. You know, thank you for your uh, fantastic insights and more power to you and the whole ecosystem. And here's hoping that India really leads the way uh, in space tech. Thank you so much, Ipshita. Satsure isn't just building an earth intelligence company, it's building a blueprint for how space, AI and decision intelligence can come together to solve real world challenges at scale. From enabling farmers with agri-lending insights to strengthening climate resilience and urban planning, it shows us what's possible when technology meets purpose. As we count down to tech sparks, Stories like Satsha remind us why the future of India's growth will be shaped by entrepreneurs who dare to harness deep tech to reimagine, reinvent and rebuild industries with impact. For more such stories on startups and technology, stay tuned to your story. Thank you for watching.